I'm paddling over to take a look at some white water lilies, species Nymphaea odorata. In the morning they open up beautiful white lotuses and they smell wonderful. Right now in the evening they're closed up. I want to go see what they look like in their evening forms. And there are more in the background. Here's one right in the center. You still see a bit of white. It's closed up, conical form. In my meta patterns language, I would say it's reverting to its spherical tendency, compact, minimal surface area for protection. If we turn to the leaf, we see a very different pattern from the bud. The leaf is a flat shape called, in meta patterns language, a sheet. It's a plane, but because there's no pure two-dimensional object in the real world, it's, it's three-dimensional. Uh, it's a sheet, and look at that perfect sheet there. It's floating on the water, taking advantage of the water's natural surface, uh, spreading out the cells, the green cells, to do photosynthesis and collect the sunlight. These plants also collect carbon dioxide in their upper surface, unlike a lot of plants that have it uh, collected through little holes in their leaves on their lower surfaces, but they wouldn't do the plant so good here because the upper surface is more exposed uh, to the air and the interface. And if you can see down, I don't know if you can see down there, but there's these long stems of this plant. They go all the way down to the sediments, and I pull one up, uh, there's the stems. These send the food down from the leaves down to the roots in the sediments. The, this plant has rhizomes, which are swollen roots, somewhat like uh, the ginseng root you're probably familiar with, to cook with. The roots, in turn, are sending up through these uh, tubes minerals that the leaves need to grow the various substances besides carbon that they get directly from the, uh, the air they capture. There are the three basic patterns of shape here. The spheroidal shape, compact shape, rounded shape. I, I, I call it a sphere in a meta patterns, although it's not a perfect sphere here, but it's a tendency towards sphericity. And the leaf itself, the flat shape, not much more than a tendency, it is really uh, a sheet. And then the tube, so one dimensional, two-dimensional orientation and three-dimensional. Basic dimensionalities here of geometry, and they're not just geometry, they are inherently functional for the plant. I've come ashore to take a wine glass and to look at its basic shapes. In meta patterns language, I would call it a, a sheet and here's the tube, and here's the sphere. Now this doesn't seem like a tube, it's solid, uh, but in fact it is transporting, nonetheless, it's transporting the forces from the top weight of the wine and the glass downward to the base, to the foot, and these are technically called mechanical stresses that are being transported along this column. Uh, and even though it's unlike the water lilies transport of gases and, and materials such as food and minerals, it is nonetheless a shape that has been designed by cultural evolution for transport. The base is like the lily, lily's leaf, the lily pad, large surface area, not in this case to collect sunlight or collect carbon dioxide, but to transfer the mechanical stresses again over a large area onto whatever table you're, you're setting this on. And uh, there is therefore taking advantage of the sheets large surface area. The top, the special bowl that holds the wine, not a perfect sphere, seems to have some uh, lily decor around it here, very pretty in my opinion. And it's hollow at the top so the wine can go in and out, but the main idea here is a shape for enclosure, for protection. Spherical, minimal surface area, lots of volume, the tube for transport, the separation of two other functional entities across space, and the sheet to do a large transport across its 
huge surface area, in this case for stabilizing the wine glass. Three primordial shapes, both in the wine glass and in the water lily, just 50 meters away from here.